One morning early in December 1934, the company submitted its new respirator for testing and approval to the United States Bureau of Mines, where its founders had been employed. The foremost governmental body in the world devoted to studying problems of safety. No one knew better than those former Bureau engineers how severe these tests would be. Each part had to be checked for safety, wearability, ease of inspection, maintenance, and cleanability. The respirator was reassembled, passed on. To make sure it would fit various kinds and sizes of faces, it had to form a dust-tight seal on all types, the long and narrow, the medium, the round and full. To test security of fit, coal dust was blown into the air. They breathe deeply, trying to suck in all the dust they can. When the respirators are removed, the sharp white line must show not a sign of leakage around the face piece. His face is dirty, but his lungs are clean. To test whether the filter is easy to breathe through, the respirator was sealed to a form having a tube through which air was passed. If the liquid reaches that line, the filter is rejected as being unfit for easy breathing. Most difficult of all would be the final test in this dust chamber, which is filled with a concentration of dust so heavy that in five and one-fifth hours, a filter receives as much dust as it will on any eight-hour job. All adjustments made, the test begins. The finely ground silica dust is fed into the chamber. Revolving fans keep the dust circulating in the air. The contaminated air is drawn through the respirator. Any dust the filter fails to screen out is collected in this tube. as you could place on the head of a pin. This filter, like all the others before it, would be rejected. The verdict will be important, not merely to the fate of the respirator, but to the comfort and health of workers on dusty jobs throughout America and the world. At last on that day, for the first time in history, the Bureau of Mines awarded to the Comfort Respirator manufactured by Mine Safety Appliances Company, the Bureau's first seal of approval under the dust respirator test schedule. After that, with further research and study, it was possible to adapt the design for protection against lead dust, metal fumes, gases, and even to develop a new type for dust and mist, 